everyone. I'm going to show you my method for making cabbage rolls. Some people are intimidated by uh, making cabbage rolls because there's so many steps, but uh, it's really pretty easy and I'll run through it. So there you kind of see all the ingredients uh, laid out and I'll go through the list for you. So we have one cup of sauerkraut, one cup of diced onions, half a cup of washed uncooked rice, and a pound of each of ground pork and ground beef, and one large green cabbage in a three to four pound range. Then we have two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons of paprika, not spicy, just regular or sweet, one tablespoon of Maggi, which is a liquid seasoning, one teaspoon of garlic powder, half to one teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon black pepper, two cans of tomato soup, and there you see the sizes, and one to two cups of your favorite tomato sauce involved in the, to be put in the baking process and at the end as a topping. So first thing you want to do is, depending on the size of your cabbage, get to about four or five liters or about a gallon and a bit of water on the stove and get up to a rolling boil. In the meantime, you wanna mix your pork and your beef together if you're using the two different meats. Mix them well. I usually keep one pound portions of ground meat in my freezer and then take them out the day before to thaw out. And then add all these ingredients, your uncooked washed rice, it's a short grain rice, diced, finely diced, uh, cooking onion or yellow onion, and your pound, your one cup of sauerkraut, your white or black pepper, either one, garlic powder and salt, and your maggi, which is a, if people are unfamiliar, it's similar to soy sauce. Um, if you can't find it, it's in, available in most stores, if not uh, Asian stores as well. Um, you can always add a little bit more salt in, in its place. And there you see the olive oil and the two tablespoons of paprika. And you're going to mix that well with your hands. Now you're dealing with paprika, so it's going to stain your hands a little bit. So if you prefer to wear gloves, that's fine. But uh, I just wash my hands, make sure they're clean. And you kind of want to, when you start, uh, just kind of fluff everything up to get all the uh, rice grains and the sauerkraut mixed in together first uh, before you kind of start uh, mixing it a little more uh, aggressively. So. Again, don't use spicy paprika. There are different types. Um, a lot of people will use sweet Hungarian or just regular paprika. But uh, be sure to taste your paprika first. You don't want the spicy kind, unless you prefer that. But um, I like the sweet or just neutral flavored paprika. So give that a good mix. In the meantime, your water is boiling on the stove. And I just shape this into a mound and I put it in the fridge until I'm ready to use it. Gives the flavors a chance to uh, come together as well. Just cover it up with a sheet of saran wrap. So we want to core our cabbage. You need a, a good, sharp, flexible knife. Um, excuse the hairy arm there in the, in the foreground, but what you're doing is coring it. So you're taking the, the core, initially a fairly shallow cut, taking that out, and then you want to go deeper into the cabbage. So your, your end goal is to take the hard core out of the cabbage because you're not going to be using that uh, when you're using your leaves. Okay, so go a little bit deeper probably like a 25 degree angle of, of your knife. Obviously be careful. You usually end up with some on the floor, but that's that's fine. Another option is to cut part of the other side of the cabbage flat so it stays on your surface and doesn't roll around as much. Um, but uh, as long as you have a good grip, just be careful. So there you can see the, the hole is fairly deep into the cabbage and that's what you want. You don't want uh, the big thick pieces of cabbage uh, as part of your leaves. 
So we'll uh, very carefully place that in the water. Again, four to five liters. I usually just flip it around like that and uh, let it come to a rolling boil. And in the meantime, I have a large colander or strainer set up in the sink. You can have a large bowl or several strainers. So I use uh, tomato soup in cans as the kind of cooking liquid in the bottom of the roasting pan. So this is optional. You can just use water or um, another type of liquid. Some people use stock, but uh, I find the tomato soup does add uh, a lot of uh, flavor to the sauce, a little bit of sweetness. You could use a V8 juice or a type of a vegetable cocktail as well, but uh, this is very easy to use and quick. So you're going to empty both cans in there. And of course we're going to add the two cans of water and we're going to whisk that up to make a thin sauce. Now we're not going to pre-cook it, it's just going to be placed into the roasting pan which I'll show you in a minute. Now keep in mind when you're cooking your cabbage on the stove top, uh, we're not overcooking the cabbage, uh, we're just getting the leaves loose off the uh, head. So what you're basically doing is parboiling the leaves you're not uh, so keep an eye on the stove don't uh, let your cabbage overcook because then you're going to have leaves that uh, tear and they're too too fragile so there you can see i'm taking off the outer leaves which is usually two or three and i'm going to use those to line the bottom of the roasting pan with some of that sauce um, you could also use these to make some of the rolls if you had extra filling but uh, i generally use these for the uh, to cover the bottom of the pan because they're so large and usually they have some scrapes and tears in them anyway so I'm going to place half of my tomato soup mixture in the bottom of the roasting pan so this roasting pan goes in my electric uh, it's electric uh, roaster um, 18 quart so you could just use a regular oven roaster pan so you can see how easily they come off I use a large uh, fork tool and a pair of tongs and you kind of just lift up and if it comes off easily then you know it's ready to come out so it takes a few minutes uh, every kind of layer takes a few minutes but not very long especially if you have a good rolling boil going on so you're grabbing it by kind of the spine of the leaf that's the best place to grab it so you don't tear anything and they should just come right off if there's any resistance, that means they're not ready to come off and uh, you just give it another 30 seconds to a minute. But you can see how easily they come off. So there you can see the first few leaves and uh, you'll, you'll notice they'll shrink. They'll actually continue to cook and, and steam a bit. So don't worry about um, them be not cooked enough because they will continue to cook with the steam and be nice and pliable. So I don't add any, some people add vinegar to the water, I just add you know a tablespoon of uh, whatever salt I'm using. Um, I don't really notice a difference if you add vinegar or not. Uh, but some people do, so that's an option. So here you can see I'm lifting up the uh, the leaves just to see if they're ready to come off. There was a few that weren't. So the ones that are, I'm taking off, and the others I'm just going to give another, like I said, 36, 30 uh, seconds to a minute. But they should just pop off like that. So there you see I'm just checking and they're not coming right off so I'm just going to kind of loosen them up let that boiling water get in there and 
and now they're ready to come off. So when you're looking for cabbage, when you're at the, the store or the market, try to get one in the three to four pound, a, you know, a good sized cabbage. Um, the smaller ones, you won't be able to have nice large leaves to do your rolling. So um, try to get a larger, um, larger size and not medium or small. I've used Savoy cabbage before um, without too many problems. It's just the, the leaves are pretty fragile and they tend to tear. Um, I prefer the regular green cabbage. And just continue on. It's, uh, you'll notice that the leaves become uh, quite um, odd shaped and uh, you can still make uh, small rolls with them. But generally when it gets down to this size I will uh, just pull the last few leaves off and then take the, uh, the big piece out and just cut it into pieces. Obviously everything's edible so just uh, leaves on their own with some of that sauce is also a, a good side dish as well. And you're dealing with boiling water so just be careful. Have your fan running and I usually try to make as much mess as I can. That's why you don't see any towels anywhere but yeah. You see you can get quite a few uh, leaves off of one large cabbage, so. And there's the last piece that uh, I'm just going to cut up into uh, chunks and place in the bottom of the roasting pan. To spread those out and I'm going to add my outer leaves the large green usually they're pretty green and I usually kind of break the spine a little bit to flatten them out or else they are pretty curved so just kind of uh, lay them flat as much as you can so this helps to prevent any burning on the, the bottom of your roasting pan when you're baking, you don't want to have it too high of a temperature either because you'll end up uh, burning the, the bottom of uh, and sides of, uh, of the contents. So, But it does help to put a few leaves in the bottom and some of the sauce. Like That's what I found anyway. So I'm going to go through um, how to trim some of the leaves. So there you can see the, the spine of the leaf. I, I take a little piece off because it can, have, it can be kind of stringy sometimes. And then when you take your filling, I just first roll into a ball and then a slight cylinder shape and this first method I'm showing you how to do it in your hand instead of on a surface so I fold over both sides and I start rolling and then I fold in the ends and tuck in so some people prefer this method they have they seem to have more control especially for smaller rolls and you get it pretty tight as well. So you flip it over and you, this is what I do anyway, I, I take a layer off of that, uh, that spine of the leaf, because that can be pretty thick. And now I'm just laying down my work surface instead of having it in my hand. Take some of the filling. And it's important not to have too much filling uh, in each leaf either because the don't forget your rice is uncooked and it's going to expand so you don't want too much filling uh, because it might uh, and if you roll too tightly um, it could blow out the ends or uh, kind of the roll will expand too much so there you can see I'm just continuing to tuck the uh, the sides and ends in and not too tight and it doesn't have to be perfect So 
So you get the hang of it. Take that little piece off. Now the other option, what some people do, and I'll show you here, is they'll cut a little V in the base of the, the kind of the spiny section there, and uh, because that can be quite thick as well. So if you want, you can take a little V off the end. I don't find it makes too much of a difference, so I don't always make that extra cut. Okay, start with a fairly tight roll. Bring your ends in. And here's a close-up of that uh, me trimming off the spine. And if you want that extra V cut. And the ingredients list you can adjust to if you prefer a little more rice or a little more um, salt or any other seasoning. Um, this is fairly neutral. Um, the sauerkraut I make myself and it's not too strong. It's fermented sauerkraut. But I always do add a, at least a cup of that to uh, my cabbage rolls and it gives it a bit of an extra flavor. So here I'm going to place my cabbage rolls. Keep them nice and tight together. Now this is kind of a, a medium batch because I did the filling fairly large in each leaf but if you make smaller uh, a smaller amount of filling in each leaf you can have more cabbage rolls obviously because there's quite a few leaves left over. So in this batch I did 18 rolls which is a fair size of batch of uh, cabbage rolls. And this roasting pan, uh, again, is 18 quart. Uh, it's electric. But obviously you can use a traditional roasting pan or some people use the uh, aluminum uh, pans, the rectangular ones. So this is your remaining tomato, sauce, uh, tomato soup sauce. Just pour it over. So it kind of adds to the flavor it, it gives you a, a thin sauce at the end and then I always add some nice thick tomato sauce uh, as a topping on each uh, each roll but this helps uh, provide a good liquid base and it steams the rolls really well so you have a bottom layer of leaves and now you're doing your your top layer and this kind of seals everything in and cooks it nice and evenly Obviously there's a lot of moisture content in the leaves as well, so it provides a lot of uh, steam. So here's some of my uh, homemade tomato sauce and I made it extra thick because I like uh, I don't like it too runny on cabbage rolls so I had some left over in a jar placing that on top and I'm just going to spread it out so if you're doing this in the oven mean uh, in the meantime you've uh, preheated your oven to 250 Fahrenheit but like I said I do it in my electric roaster and I do it in the basement uh, just because the uh, cabbage rolls can kind of stink up the house pretty good so I, I do it in the laundry room and plug it in on top of the washing machine and 
I cover and cook for three to four hours, uh, depending on the size of your rolls and how many are in there. Um, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. If you go higher than that, you're likely to, to burn the edges. So this is after an hour. So it's better to cook uh, kind of low and slow than, uh, than quickly, especially with cabbage. It can burn pretty easy. Okay, this is after three hours. So it's pretty much done at this point. Uh, you can always check them, but uh, I had lots of time, so I just let it go for another hour. But generally around three hours, they should be done for medium-sized rolls. So now they're ready to serve. What I'm doing here is just taking the upper layer off of leaves and just grabbing one to make sure it is done. I use, just do a taste test. And now we're ready to serve. So we'll just pull aside the top layer of leaves. And there you can see there's lots of sauce in the bottom that you can scoop up as well. It's obviously the thinner sauce, but it has some sweetness to it as well. And then I add a bit of my homemade tomato sauce. Obviously you can use store-bought as well, and uh, a thicker sauce is better than not, but um, yeah, this one works really well. And again, I got 18 rolls out of this batch. So not very hard to make. A bit time-consuming, but uh, you get probably two or three meals out of this as well, so it's pretty economical. And there's actually a lot of sweetness in, in the cabbage itself, so it's not a very harsh taste. So if you've never made them before, give it a shot. Appreciate everyone watching. Thanks for uh, tuning in and subscribe for upcoming videos. Thank you.